Hi everyone. So now we're going to read chapters four, five, and six of George's Marvelous Medicine. I'll tell you something funny though. I just recorded this whole thing in slow-mo. So when I went to upload it, it was like this. At this point, it was all in slow-mo. Animal pills. At this point, George suddenly had an extra good idea. Although the medicine cabinet, cabinet in the house was forbidden, what about the medicine his father kept on the shelf in the shed next to the hen house? The animal medicine. What about those? Nobody had ever told him he couldn't go out there and touch that medicine. Let's face it, George said to himself, shaving cream and hairspray and shoe polish was all very well and would no doubt cause some sort of explosion for Grandma. What about the magic mix? What, but what the magic mixture now needs is a touch of the real stuff, some pills or tonics to give it some punch. George picked up the big saucepan and carried it out to the back door. He crossed the farmyard and headed straight for the shed alongside the hen house. He knew his father wouldn't be there. His father was off in the fields, cutting down all the grass to make hay. George entered the dusty old shed and put the saucepan on the bench and he looked at the medicine shelf. There were five big bottles there. Two were full of pills and two were runny stuff and one was powder. I'll use them all, said George. Grandma needs them. Boy, does she need them. The first bottle he took down contained orange powder and it was for chickens. Well, George said aloud to himself as he tipped the whole bottle full. The old bird won't be losing any feathers after she has a dose of this. Why did he call his grandma a bird? The next bottle he took down had 500 giant pills in it. Now this is pretty funny. For horses with hoarse throats. A hoarse throat is when your voice is croaky. So if you were speaking like this, you say, oh, my voice is very hoarse. So it, the hoarse throated horse should suck one pill twice a day. Grandma may not have a hoarse throat, George said, but she certainly got a sharp tongue. If you've got a sharp tongue, it means that you're nasty. It's an English expression. We say, oh, she's got a sharp tongue, or he's got a sharp tongue, it means he wasn't very nice. Maybe that will cure that instead. So he put those 500 tablets into the saucepan. And then there was a bottle of thick yellow liquid for cows. The grumpy old cow in the living room. Oh, now he's called her a cow and a bird. The grumpy old cow in the living room has every one of those rotten illnesses, George said. She'll need it all. And with a slop and a gurgle, the yellow liquid splashed into the now nearly full saucepan. I like the way he doesn't, this author doesn't just say, then she added this and then he added that. He said it sploshed and the yellow liquid splashed into the saucepan. The next bottle was red liquid, sheep dick dip, and it was to stop sheep getting their, getting fleas and lice. By gum, how I'd love to walk in and slosh that all over grandma and watch all the ticks and lice and fleas go jumping off her. But I can't. I mustn't. She'll have to drink it. And he poured the red medicine into the saucepan. The last bottle was pale green pills. Pig pills. Just the stuff for the, uh, the miserable old pig back there in the house. She'll need a lot of this. So he tipped them all into the saucepan too. There was a stick lying there that had been used to stir paint. So George picked it up and started stirring his marvelous concoction. When you make something like that, you can say it's a concoction. The mixture was as thick as cream. And as he stirred and stirred, wonderful colors rose up, pinks and blues and greens and a little bit of brown. But remember, George was trying to make brown. George went on stirring until it was well mixed in, but even then there were still hundreds of pills lying at the bottom. And there was his mother's powder puff so floating on the top. Oh, I'm gonna have to boil it. A quick boil on the stove is all it needs. And he staggered back to the house with the box, uh, with the saucepan. 
On the way, he passed the garage. He added engine oil, antifreeze and grease. Then back he went to the kitchen. Chapter five, the cooker. In the kitchen, George put the saucepan on the stove and turned up the gas, the flame underneath, um, to as high as it would go. George, came a voice. It's, uh, it's time for my medicine. No, 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 not yet, Grandma. Still 20 minutes to go, he said as he checked his watch. What mischief are you up to in there? I hear noises. George thought it best not to say anything. He found a long wooden spoon and he stirred the thick mixture, mixture as it got hotter and hotter. Soon the marvellous mixture began to froth and foam like bubble bath. A rich blue smoke, the colour of peacocks rose from the surface of the liquid and a fiery fearsome smell filled the kitchen. I like the way Roald Dahl says things like not just a smell filled the kitchen but a fiery fearsome smell. He's using adjectives. It made George choke and splutter. It was a smell unlike any he had smelled before. Listen to all the descriptions. It was brutal and bewitching, spicy and staggering, fierce and frenzied, full of wizardry and magic. Whenever he got a whiff of it up his nose, firecrackers went off in his skull and electric prickles ran down the backs of his legs. It was wonderful to stand there stirring the mixture and watching smoking blue bubbling froth foaming as though it was alive. At one point, he could have sworn he saw bright sparks flashing in the, the swirling foam. And suddenly George found himself dancing around the steaming pot, chanting strange words that came out of his head from nowhere. I'm going to say the words that he chants they're here. It's, it's kind of like a poem or a song. And you repeat them back, okay? You ready? Fiery broth and witches brew. Foaming froth and riches blue. Fume and spume and spoon drift spray. Fizzle, swizzle, shout hooray. Watch it sloshing, swashing, sploshing. Hear it hissing, squishing, spissing. Grandma, better start to pray. You notice that Roald Dahl makes up words sometimes, which is quite fun. You could do that when you're writing your stories. Chapter six, brown paint. George turned off the heat under the saucepan and he must leave plenty of time for it to cool down. When all the steam and froth had gone away, he peered in and it was a deep, brilliant blue. Oh, it needs more brown in it, George said. Well, she'll get suspicious. George ran outside to his father's tool shed and he found brown paint. He took the lid off and carried it inside and he rushed back to the kitchen and he poured the whole lot of the brown paint into the saucepan. And it was now full to the very brim, the very top. Very gently, so not to spill, George stirred the paint into the mixture with a long wooden spoon. Aha! Now it was a richy, creamy brown. Where's the medicine of mine, boy? Came a voice from the living room. You're forgetting me. You're doing it on purpose. I shall tell your mother. No, I'm not forgetting you, Grandma, George called back. I'm thinking of you all the time. But there's still 10 minutes to go. You're a nasty little maggot, she called out. You're a lazy, disobedient little worm and you're growing too fast. George fetched the bottle of Grandma's real medicine from the sideboard. He popped off the top, he tipped it down the sink, then he filled the bottle with his own magic mixture by dripping, dipping a small jug into the saucepan and using it as a pourer. Then he replaced the cork. Had it cooled enough? Was it cold enough? Not quite. He held the bottle under a cold tap of water for a couple of minutes. All was now ready. This was it. The great moment had arrived. Medicine time. Grandma, he called out. 
I hope so too, came a grumpy reply. The silver tablespoon on which the medicine was always given, you know how you get medicine in a spoon? Was on the table. So George picked up the medicine and he picked up the bottle and he walked confidently into the living room to grandma. <laughs> I wonder what's gonna happen next. Tell your neighbor what you think is going to happen next.